Gerald Bain, right, sir? Right. Uh, Mr. Bain, where are you from? Virginia, John. Virginia? Oh, right. well, fine. It's nice to have somebody from Virginia with us in this period just around the beginning of the year. Mr. Bain, may I present the panel? I don't know, Bain. Will you join me over here, Mr. Bain? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. All right, in that event, we'll let the folks in the audience here in the theater and those who are looking in at home know exactly what your line is. So what is he on break? He's on a break from protecting Eisenhower. I guess home is home watching the show. Apparently. Okay. Well. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing about Gerald Bain because he then becomes the head of the White House detail uh, for JFK. And that's going to figure in more into part two of this story. A lot of these cats overlapped administration to administration. Okay. Sounds good. So we are going to go back a little bit in time, though, right? This is going to be a two-parter to... two-parter. Yeah, it doesn't really fit into one. I didn't really want to squeeze it in because I, I think what we should do here is do a brief history, not get into depth, but just the history of the Secret Service. And that would eat up too much time from the Kennedy White House detail Secret Service, which is really what I'm interested in. Not really interested in the history of the Secret Service that much, uh, but I think it sets the ground for where we're going with the Kennedy things. We couldn't just jump into the Kennedy thing uh, without knowledge of the Secret Service. And, you know, the presidential Secret Service is uh, part of the Secret Service, as Eric and I both were talking about. They start out the Treasury Department. Um, and I, 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 <laughs> I hate to do this, but if you could show that, that uh, <clears throat> April 14th, 1865, uh, artist conception of a bad night for Lincoln. Um, <laughs> This is obviously John Wilkes Booth shooting Lincoln in the back of the head, April 14th, 1865. And the reason, other than the assassination of a president, as to why it's fascinating, is because that day, on April 14th, 1865, that morning, Abraham Lincoln, as president of the United States, signed the executive order and bill creating the Secret Service. <laughs> Perfect. And it's, but it's an odd agency anyway, in the sense that they started out to chase counterfeiters right, and right. track money. Yeah, yeah. Well, and apparently then, a third of all money at that time was counterfeit because of the Confederacy. Yeah, it makes sense. I One mean, third of American currency was counterfeit. Oh, sure. No, it totally makes sense. But it's odd that later on they became a presidential protection detail. Just it, it doesn't necessarily line up really, really well. Well, they're kind of the first domestic intelligence agency, too, Eric. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, it came predates, out of right, but it predates ONI, mm -hmm. Office of Naval Intelligence, by about 20 or 30 years. But the assignment uh, to the presidential um, uh, protection does not come until 1902, after right. this event in 1901, which is what creates it. Not sure. that one. <laughs> that no, one. No, 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 a later one. Oh, yeah, a yeah. later one, which happens. Well, there's the currency, uh, I guess, an artist conception. Yeah, yeah. Of them creating coins. I th I always thought it was more paper money, but maybe they did they create coins too? Yeah, I believe so. Well, and, and keep in mind that it was easier to counterfeit because you had all the different states' currency too, if I recall back then. It, it was it was a little bit more confusing. Interesting. Um, where you know whose money was what, etc. And the, the more variety you have, the more you can pull off. Right. Well, let's not forget uh, Robert Conrad and uh, Dr. McCoy in Wild Wild West, uh, where <laughs> McCoy plays Artemis Gordon and Conrad plays Jim West. They're both Secret Service agents. One of my favorite shows as a kid, because West had all these derringers and crap all over him, uh, kind of like Yancey Derringer and Bat Masterson did. I had the Derringer belt buckle, Eric, where mm. the buckle opened up into a Derringer and came off into your hand and shot caps. I don't know if anybody cool. in the Very chat cool. knows about that, but um, I do. 
you do. And that, that was based on Yancey Derringer and I believe Bat Masterson, who were both uh, post-Civil War PIs, one in San Francisco, the other one in New Orleans, Yancey Derringer. But God, I loved Derringers as a kid. Well, it's just a cool, sneaky little weapon. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, obviously, it was. I, did they use it a Maverick too? You know, I don't know Maverick as well. I don't. Remember. I want to say they might have. I mean, because it was like a per, you know a poker hidden. It shows um, up in a lot of women's purses in the in the Civil War and the Confederacy and the West, right? Oh yeah, it's not sure. really a masculine thing, except that these guys made it into like Jim West. I think had the the thing that came out into his hand, you know, the little robotic arm um, that was we see later in Taxi Driver with Travis Bickle. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, that brings us to 1901. Yeah, this is a weird artist conception. The guy, I don't know how accurate this thing is. Oh, not at all, because the, the guy, I think, was a Puerto Rican kind of... No, 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 no. He, he was actually a Russian socialist. Oh, yeah, uh, okay, sir. An anarchist socialist who was for the working man and killed McKinley for that purpose, for revolution. Uh, this was a political assassination. His name was Gazong or something. It was hard to pronounce because it had so many uh, vowels in it. Um, yeah, there it is. Pronounce that one. Good luck. Zolkos. Zolkos. Zolkos, I guess. If, if he had or had a Zolkos. stage name like like Jimmy Zolkos or, or Zolkos Johnson, <laughs> he would have been more remembered by history. And he but, wouldn't have been mad. It would have been like somebody else who failed art school and, and ruined the world, right, right? Right. Or three names, you know, like Lee Harvey Oswald, James Earl Ray. This guy was way behind the times. However, this is kind of interesting. He covers his right hand, which has the weapon in it with a handkerchief. And that's like, you know, more than anybody probably is, and myself, is why we shake hands. Right, Eric? Mm -hmm. To show that you don't have a weapon. That's yeah. the whole point of shaking hands. He covers, this is in Buffalo. He's giving a speech up there, McKinley. He covers his hand with a handkerchief. So McKinley, thinking that he had a um, missing mm -hmm. hand or a hook or something, he yeah. went to reach for the left hand to shake his hand, and Zalgaz gets off two shots right into his chest and stomach. The second shot in the stomach obviously killing McKinley. It took about 14 days to die, and we're going to do a special episode just on the assassination of McKinley, so I don't want to get into it too deeply because it's a fascinating political assassination that leads to the Protective Service and the White House detail, which is what's relevant for us today. But just regarding McKinley, he lingers for 14 days, <clears throat> eventually dies of gangrene because they don't take out nor find the bullet. In fact, uh, Thomas Edison shows up with the first metal detector invented by That's Thomas right. Edison That's and right. goes over his body, right, Eric? No, with I the really metal detector yeah. trying to find the bullet to no avail. And he had a, he had a, a crackpot doctor it was really what we're going to get into in the story. But here's what I wanted to say about this. Zalgaz, his trial was so long and so involved and so deeply involved that the McKinley assassination happened in September. He dies at the end of September, and Zalgaz is executed in the electric chair by the end of October. He oh, wow. lasted one month after the assassination, Zalgaz. Jeez. One month, and he went to the chair. Well, they didn't fool around back then. Well, I think there were a few witnesses. Plus, he said he did it for a political reason. I mean, he was the Michael Malice of assassins, obviously. <laughs> obviously an anarchist, and he believed in anarchy. He hated the United States form of government, and he did it for the working man. As he said when he went to the electric chair, he did this for the working man to rise up and take over America. Uh, one of the first uh, anarchist killers, you know. Which a lot of people don't realize that a lot of this was here at the time. The same thing that led to the Russian Revolution. Right. Here. Well, he America. came from Russia. He was a, yeah. a, a Pole, actually. But um, Russia probably ran Poland in 1901. Um, but, yeah, he straight up was political. It was completely for uh, anarchy and socialism. All right. So we <clears throat> move ahead to his... Um, 
Oh, that's a bad one. Follow up. That's a bad one. I forget this guy's name, but he was a British ex-military guy. He was the Secret Service guard uh, guarding Teddy Roosevelt. And this carriage later on gets hit by a speeding um, train. I want to say train or, or trolley, really, a trolley uh, that's on tracks. I don't know it's a, a, a how the trolley was driven. But the trolley crashes into this carriage. Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, that is, goes flying in the air and is okay, lands on the dirt. The carriage is destroyed. But that guy right there with the bowler hat, who was six foot five, 230, is killed. And in, he is the first Secret Service agent to die in the line of duty. And it was an accident, but you know what I mean? But that he, he, it's the first recorded death of a Secret Service agent in the line of duty. Makes sense. I forgot that. It... Oh, and he also said, interestingly enough, this guy said that he kept his hand. William Craig. William Craig. Yeah, Bill Craig. He kept his hand on his revolver under his coat, pulled out under his jacket all the time. And Ooh. he said, yeah, yeah. He he kind of creates the idea for the Secret Service protection because he, he believes and says that uh, nobody should get within 10 feet of a president and should be further 18 feet. He's got all these geometric things in his mind. And then he acts according to the buffers, that the invisible buffers that he has set up for himself. But he Ooh. said he always had his hand on the trigger, always had his gun pulled, always under his coat, all times. Well, keep in mind, Roosevelt got shot too. Mm -hmm. And um, to his credit, continued and gave a speech. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, what was that? And he was um, fairly long-winded. I think he talked for like an hour after yeah. getting shot. Yep. And, uh, and I think the, a bullet, the, bullet hit, the bullet hit a book or a speech that was in his pocket, hit some papers, and it kind of dented it. I don't think it penetrated his chest that deeply. But, no, but still balls. <laughs> still, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he was a rough rider for a reason, Eric. I mean, he, hey, he yeah. this guy was a tough son of a bee. And um, I guess a bull moose later on. He, I mean, he's kind of like Trumpian in a way because he doesn't he come back and run it on his own independent yes. ticket as a bull moose, Eric? Yes, he, he, he came back because he got pissed. Who is it, Cleveland or... Um... I forgot who I put in. I think it was Cleveland. He was so pissed off with how it was going. He came back himself to. By the way, uh, he's the vice president on the McKinley and right. who moves right. up the line at the chain of command. Um, and it's amazing how many people are connected to the Roosevelt's in terms of government officials by marriage, you know, blood and stuff. But sure. that's, a, that's a story for another day. Taft, Taft, sorry. Taft, who, the fat one. Yeah. So, Taff yeah. was so fat, they had to bring in a special bathtub for him. Yeah, it's him to bathe in Taft. But there might be a photo of Taft. I don't know if I sent it to you or not. But he no, had, we don't have it. We didn't have the Taft one. Okay. <laughs> These are the, this is the first group. This is out in Arizona. You could, If you look all the way in the back, you could see Hunley's uh, house back there. Yeah. Uh, in his, in his uh, grandfather's house. I think this might be Tucson. Um, but they have some semblance of a uniform. Is what I was getting at. Um, There's a group of uh, White House detail protection protection services who are guarding, I guess, uh, Teddy Roosevelt out there in the West. Yeah, which is remarkable. I don't know how often they were traveling out west. It makes sense he would, but no, he oh, would. Yeah. So they went with him because he did all the oh, yeah. parks and stuff, Eric. Oh yeah, he was out west all the time. Oh, yeah. dude, the, the, the story. Uh, we'll get into another time, but the story where he goes to meet the president of Mexico at El Ciudad, like right on the border. And there's so many plots to kill um, uh, uh, him that they bring in the army, hundreds of Secret Service guys, I mean, thousands of people to protect the president. And they still catch a guy in El Paso who's going to assassinate him. Amazingly violent back then. Oh, well, true. True. <laughs> This is the crew, the boys. This is the boys. Yeah, I think this is in the 1920s. This is... Um, 1905. Oh, 1905. Okay, so they're starting to look a little bit more dapper here. Um, yeah, they. I mean, they look like a formidable group, you know, as a White House detail. But 
like we said, you know, even when it gets to Kennedy's time, there's only 300 of them. And the bulk of them work in counterfeiting back then, even in 63. So this is 1905. The bulk of these guys are still, I don't know if there's the White House detail per se, but the other 200 uh, were doing counterfeiting um, and had, you know, offices around the country. You know, the Chicago Secret Service and every city had a little branch. Okay, now this is kind of interesting because this is in North Africa, uh, 1942, Three. I want it. Three? Yeah. 43. Now the guy, the guy on the right who is walking along obviously it's fdr uh the men are saluting the secret service guys is like two or three of them and the guy on the right is secret service this guy on the right um will become very important in our story and he will become the head of the secret service and his name is james rowley mm. he will become very close to lbj when we get into the kennedy assassination and the Secret Service. He became, in 1961, Bauman steps down um, as head of the Secret Service, and Bauman was highly critical of the performance of the Secret Service in Dallas in 1963. They kind of shut this guy up, and they pushed him out in 61, and they brought in Rowley. Rowley was very close to a guy named Jagger Hoover. They were best friends, and... <laughs> Rowley becomes almost Siamese twins to LBJ. Uh, he is the first one to meet him when he gets off Air Force One at the bottom of the plane. He stays with him, sleeps with him, lives with him for months and months and months and months and months. Never leaves his side after the assassination of JFK. So we're going to we're going to look into Rowley. This is a classic. This is again, this is D.C. airport. Uh, this is Harry S. Truman, I think, in 1951, greeting the president, El Presidente of Mexico, uh, at Washington, D.C., what airport, whatever that was back then, Eric, that, that little airport there. But now it's, I guess, Ronald Reagan Airport or something. Um, yeah, National, I think. Then it became Reagan. Right, right, National Airport. But what I wanted to show is the configuration. This is the standard configuration of the Secret Service back then. Four men, bumper to bumper, side rails, guarding the president of the United States. This will come into play when we get to Dallas and be a huge part of the story. Um, we don't have to get into it right now, but I just wanted to show this photo, rare photo of Truman uh being guarded by the Secret Service in this case, the four guys, and 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 riding the bumpers and the rails of the uh, uh, presidential car. Yeah, I think they even had rails that came out on the car just for this purpose, right? Yes, yeah, uh, FDR had that too, and in, and of course Kennedy did too. Later on, the Lincoln uh, had the handrails installed on the back of the Lincoln. That was a custom made custom made thing that they did not have in 1960. Uh, I think they were installed in 1961 onto that Lincoln limousine. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So then, what is next? Are we talking about bubble tops or? No, no, no. I mean, let me see if you go a little further into the um, Harry S. Truman assassination attempt at Blair House. Do you have anything on that? Nope. Okay, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> just wipe them off the screen. I'll just talk directly to you, the American people, at this time. The, uh, <laughs> there is. I mean, I've got a lot of shots. But no. got, there is a um, a situation happens at Blair House, which we're going to do a special episode of, and this is when two Puerto Ricans attack the Congress of the United States with machine guns. Um, multiple Puerto Ricans, actually nationalists. This is where the Puerto Rican story comes in in 1950. Uh, so uh, he was living, Truman was living in Blair House because the White House was being renovated. So he lived in Blair House and he had um, the guards, the Secret Service guards were right across the street, uh, you know, from the White House guarding him, but they were right there. And these two Puerto Ricans come to assassinate him. And they are taken down by a D.C. Uh, policeman, and one of the Secret Service agents shoots one of them through his hat and grazes his skull. 
the metropolitan. Yeah, there he is. There's the dead one dead Puerto Rican, and um, the the guy is is what's his name? Not not Emery Roberts. The other guy, um, um, Rally. Not Rally. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember who it was. The hold on, Floyd Boring. Floyd Boring is the other Secret Service agent. Now, Floyd Boring shoots through the hat, but the Metropolitan Police guy nails him, gets killed. The Metropolitan Cop gets killed. There's Boring. He shoots him through the hat, misses him. I don't know. He misses him at point-blank range. This is the Secret Service guard. And he, um, the, the, the two of the other ones wounded, and they get apprehended. Then they apprehend the guys that are up in the gallery, machine gunning the congressman. You want to talk about insurrection? Let's talk about machine guns in the gallery of the House of Representatives mowing down congressmen. And that's an insurrection because they wanted statehood, the Puerto Ricans, which they never got. Of course, the, all of these guys will be caught, sentenced, and pardoned by a president named Jimmy Carter for reasons that were political because they wanted the electoral votes of Puerto Rico. Again, doing all kinds of democratic politics inside political criminal acts going back to jimmy carter separate episode but we're going to get into the actual shooting in another episode of the puerto rican nationalists but the reason i'm mentioning floyd boring is uh, uh floyd boring is with all these different presidents he and he will be in the kennedy episode for sure because floyd boring becomes uh second in command of the secret service floyd boring is in Warm Springs, Georgia, in 1945, and LBJ, LBJ, uh, FDR dies in his arms. Okay, that's weird, right? And, yeah. and that's a weird one, right? He's there when Harry Truman goes swimming off the presidential yacht in the Potomac River and starts drowning. Instead of diving in, Floyd Borman, uh, Floyd B- Boring, flips him a life preserver. And Truman barely survives by grabbing onto a life preserver thrown in by Floyd Boring. He then barely survives by missing the assassin. Luckily, a metropolitan policeman kills the assassins. And he goes upstairs to Truman. And Truman says, what the hell's going on down there? And he says, well, two guys came to kill you, sir. And we took care of him. Right. He claims later that he shot and killed the guy. But it's not true. The Metropolitan Policeman shot and killed the guy. He missed completely, shot him through the hat, Boring. Speaking of him. Is that him there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite an interesting. He, they were literally coming outside, and every day he, Boring, and there's plenty of photos, would walk with Truman to the White House and was his Secret Service guard. These two guys, the two Puerto Ricans, uh, we're going to Blair House to assassinate him. This was never covered. And the reason it's not covered is because Puerto Rico being a Democratic appendage, mm. Democratic Party, and Truman being a Democrat. Never, ever covered. But we, you and I, Hunley, are going to cover the shit out of it when we do that Puerto Rican assassination episode. Because it later leads to the FALN, the bombing of Francis Tavern in New York, and other political, political, uh, crazy crap that Puerto Rican nationalists have done throughout modern post-World War II American history as radicals as their own weather underground, which nobody will cover this because of this lock the Democratic Party has on Puerto Rico. It's like a 30-year cycle here. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm just, same thing in Lincoln to McKinley. It's like oh, 26 yeah. years. And you have um, Truman. Uh, well, okay, now that's like 40 years. I'm just saying it's... Pretty frequently, well, Roosevelt got shot. They were shooting at him quite a bit. Oh, no, it, it's a violent country. Don't get me wrong, my friend. I mean, remember when LBJ takes the vice presidency, he has his guy go check out how many presidents are killed. That's right. He comes back and he says it's one every 20 years, and this is exactly 20 years in 1960. And he says famously, I'm a gambling man. I like those odds, honey. And he takes the job of vice president. And miraculously, another 20-year president is killed. Um, So he's a gambling man, LBJ. And then another 20 years later. um, They get 81. They get Reagan. Go jump to 20 years, literally. I mean, 1981, 
coming outside the hotel in D.C. Uh, we have Tim McCarthy. Right. That's Tim McCarthy on the extreme right hand side of the screen. He will spread himself out to take the 22 bullet from a guy named John Inkley, uh, who is over in the background there on the right. Uh, obviously, Reagan does get shot in the chest by Hinckley. But Tim McCarthy, yeah, there, there's the aftermath. But the reason this is important, besides the Hinckley story, which we'll do as a separate episode, obviously, the reason this, and, and Brady gets shot in the head, obviously becomes a vegetable, um, or semi-vegetable, I, sh I should take that back. But the reality of it is, uh, this guy, Tim McCarthy, this is uh, March 30th, 1981, uh, Washington, D.C., in front of the Hilton. Um, apparently, you're quite vulnerable when you're coming out of a hotel and ready to get into a car. That's kind of where there's a crowd and there's always a lot of shaking and baking over there. But Hinckley gets off the shot. He spreads himself. There's a very famous photo. I don't think we have it. Of, of, of McCarthy spreading himself out, making himself bigger, Eric bigger with his arms out and his chest out like 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 batman to take the bullet from john hinckley in the stomach which he did which he did impressive and very impressive he gets an award blah 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 i mean this but this was the secret service at its best nothing nothing tops tim mccarthy in terms of taking a bullet for the president he saw the gun stepped in front of it spread himself out took the freaking bullet in the chest I mean, that takes some some brass balls to pull that off. Now, you say, well, John Hinckley, how, how could he be involved in a conspiracy? Well, as, as you know, as we discussed last night, Hinckley's father was having dinner the night before with uh, George Bush's brother, Neil Bush, <laughs> while Hinckley was in the bedroom playing Beatle records backwards, you know, saying, Paul is dead, Paul is dead, Paul is dead. Well, he's warming up for his, his current YouTube career, Mark. Come on. Right, well, he's back. And his cat looks better than your cat, Hunley. I hey, mean, how dare you? How no, I mean, dare as, you? <laughs> as, a, as a YouTube internet figure, the cat is quite prominent in the Hinckley, in the Hinckley uh, 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 you know, presentation. But Hinckley, I mean, Neil Bush having dinner with John Hinckley Sr., John Hinckley Sr., and, you know, while his son is in the bedroom mixing up the medicine, you know, I'm on the pavement thinking about the government, as Bob said, this case is so bizarre. It would be like Robert Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald's brother, Lee Harvey Oswald's brother, <laughs> you know what I mean, having dinner with LBJ the night before Oswald shot, allegedly, you know, shot Kennedy. Uh, that would be the, and you, when I say that to people, they look at me like that's the craziest thing that anybody could possibly come up with. Robert Oswald having dinner with LBJ as vice president the night before his brother, uh, in this case, it's obviously the son, but let's just mm -hmm. say the brother is having dinner with, uh, you know, the vice presidential <laughs> guy. Now, you know, that's kind of what's going on here. You can't spin it any other way. Despite destruction of property, records, Freedom of Information Act uh, uh, requests, nothing gets George Bush, uh, J Neil Bush in this particular case, or the Bush family, away from John Hinckley Sr. and the fact that his son, if accurate, would have made uh, um, their, you know, George Bush yeah. president of the United States. Yeah, he would have helped with the promotion. He would have helped <laughs> with the promotion. <clears throat> For sure. And uh, by the way, John Hinckley is at 51.4 thousand Twitter followers. Is Not he a blue, blue check. A blue yet. check? Not yet, but but we're going to have a blue check watch on him. The John Hinckley blue check blue watch, watch on him because that'll be a day to celebrate when they when they let Hinckley. I think so. Apparently in his mansion, it overlooks a golf course and he's back in his old bedroom again. Mm -hmm. Overlooks a golf course where Trump and Obama and Joe, and all these different presidential candidates. You can't make this up, Eric. He's sniper Play now. golf. And he's looking out the window at him. Going, Look, there's Trump. He's playing through on the ninth hole. Uh, he's okay. He only used a pistol. He only used a pistol. <laughs> he's not a good rifleman like Chuck Connors, who was oh obviously God. the rifleman, ended up being the third baseman for the uh, L.A. Dodgers in 1958. I digress. But the reality of it is Hinckley's back, baby, and he's bigger than ever. And if I was Jody Foster, I will double. I would double down on my security immediately. Oh, Kings Mill, I think is where he's um, right. looking right. over, because he lives in uh, Williamsburg. 
lots of lots of old okay money. but it, it's kind of on a golf course right yeah yeah king's mill is like a resort that, right okay big, I, thought I, was crazy. I, I thought i misread that or something but no 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 it's a super rich area but it, it's like one of those places it's a zip code Right, and uh, there are like real estate agents, or there are people who live there and they can't afford their furniture. Mm -hmm. But the address is so important; they have like folding chairs inside their house That's just funny. so they can have the address. That's funny. I'm, I'm not kidding. Is he <laughs> the wealthiest presidential assassin of all time? I don't know. Booth. Well, I don't know what actors made at the time. Probably not as much. I was going to say right. Booth could have been all right. Will Hinckley inherit the entire estate of the Hinckley oil fortune? Uh, thereby becoming the H.L. Hunt of assassins. Could be. Right. Well, I think that uh, John... Has he already? Are, are his parents gone? Are they? No, no, I think the mother's still alive. I think the father's gone. But it, it, the reality of it is Zapata Oil, which was Bush's family CIA cover oil company, to all you Bush fanatics out there, I'm not really a Bush guy. I've never really um, spent that much time. I, I think it's probably a generational thing you know, delving deep into the Bush family. I just mm. always, it, it wasn't even that hidden to me. It always seemed like, you know, there's a deep state family with oil ties, CIA ties. The guy becomes the head of um, the CIA, Bush Sr. And I always compared it to Yuri Andropov, you know, who was head of the KGB and then became the head of uh, the Soviet Union for a brief period of time. Mm. You know, and they kept saying, it's unbelievable. Yuri Andropov, the head of the KGB. Obviously the same thing with Putin. Yeah, but I, I think it, no, no, but I, yeah. I, I think they, they with Andropov, I think it was the same scenario. And the, the media, the Western media kept going berserk. And I'm going like, wait a second, was it Bush the head of the CIA and then president? I mean, what difference does it make? Well, it's the CIA. And I'm going, yeah. And what are they, worse <laughs> than the KGB or what's the deal here? I mean, it, it's deep state in both countries is all I'm saying. Sure. Deep, yeah. We've got our own deep state. But the Hinckley story is just wonderful. But We'll get into that. That's a story for just Hinckley himself, which we'll do. I mean, there was a great joke in the 80s. Anybody wanted to fuck Jodie Foster and kill Ronald Reagan is all right with me. That was a that was a common joke back then. You know, I don't know where it came from, but um, I didn't really agree with that because obviously Jodie Foster was a lesbian, went to Yale, and he was calling her on the phone. He had a mad crush on her. So her and her girlfriends in the payphone in her dormitory when Hinckley called, and she called Hinckley too, by the way, she would put them, uh, hold up the phone while they're all giggling, uh, all her girlfriends at Yale, as at Hinckley, who was in love with her, you know, had a mad crush on her, which may have driven him insane. Great. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the highest pinnacle of mean girls. Right, you're exactly saying. true. That's what I was going for. Thank you, Eric. That was the name, and they, they ridiculed him and he would call on Friday nights. And I, I, there's a lot of stuff that's never been explored that we will get into with Hinckley. He is not completely a bad guy. Let me just put it that way. And his records are selling now, obviously, his music. You know, yeah, he's he's an artist. He, I, he, I still want to see his, when he gets his blue check. I'm, I'm going to have an issue. That's gonna You're going to have an issue. Yeah. Well, uh, Barnes doesn't even have one, right? Nope. Nope. Why not? not? How, well, how do you get a blue check? No, you got to be special. I mean, but Viva's got one, but Barnes doesn't. Yeah, David managed to get one. Uh, don't know how that occurred, but actually, wh where is the Hinkley YouTube channel? On Hinkley Junior Music. See if, how's he doing on I think he signed with Universal. He's going to be. Okay. Boring. Yeah. Okay, guys, you, you got it. You can't let this keep happening. Right. John Hinckley has 30.2 thousand subscribers on YouTube. He's got more subscribers than we do? He has more subscribers. Now, come on. We're talking about a guy right now yes. who tried to kill the president of the United States. Has more subs than America's Untold Stories. You know, I'm, embarrassed unacceptable. To be, I'm embarrassed to be an American today, honey. I really am. The, oh. the, it's like John Wilkes Booth getting an Academy Award over, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, um, Robert De Niro, something like yeah. that. This, this cannot stand. This cannot stand. Wow. I mean, we have Chris Cuomo out there. We've got the Hinckley guy? out there. Oh, God only knows. He you know what? Out. Chris Cuomo should interview Hinckley on his show. I think he should. And then they'd have a merger of the subs. That would be brilliant ideas. By the way, if you're going to get French cuffs, try to get the rounded back French cuffs if they're custom made so it doesn't catch on your coat. Just a little fashion tip for today for you guys at home. 36.3 thousand. What's that? 
36.3,000. Oh, Cuomo. Oh, my God. Cuomo's got more than us? Cuomo's always had more than us. It's very interesting. I know. All right, let's move on to... we got to go backwards. Got us. Oh, no, we got to go backwards in time to Gerald Ford. Yep. Um, to 74, uh, seven, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We jumped ahead to Reagan because that was the greatest Secret Service moment of all time. That is but this double barrel action, and I say double barrel action of Ford. This is three weeks apart, one in Sacramento, the other one in uh San Francisco, Sarah Jane Moore, obviously in squeaky, <laughs> squeaky from uh both trying to kill the same man for eco-terrorist reasons. And we're gonna get into this in depth with the Gerald Ford double barrel assassination episode, which will uh, combine uh Sarah Jane Moore and Squeaky From, by the way, which I was completely forgot. Was she's out, I think. She's out now. Yes, yeah, she is out now. But she never went to jail for the Manson thing because she wasn't <laughs> there. And, and that allowed her to get this gun from a sugar daddy up in Sacramento who she, sixty, you know, an older man who she, I, I guess, provided some sort of sexual favors to, who gave her a Cadillac, which she totaled, and then he gave her a Volkswagen, and then he gave her the handgun, and then he gave her ammo, and then she went to shoot Gerald Ford. Which was, you know, and and the gun was later donated to, the, to the Gerald Ford Museum where it is right now, and um, it was uh, a Beretta, you know, standard uh, military uh, Beretta. But the the reality of it is that um, the Secret Service really didn't do their job in either one of these occasions. Mostly, it was done by local police, and Gerald Ford showed up in Sacramento to speak at this dinner because Jerry Brown refused to speak there. And it was an environmental based dinner. And uh, he had cut back the EPA uh, oversight of smog um, me measures or metrics. I think Trump did the same thing, right? Mm. About smog allowance in the state of California, or federal. So Squeaky Frome was part of ATWA um, which was Manson's uh, creation, air, at was air, water, uh, animals, and what was a what was tea? Acid, no, trees, no. trees. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, at was air, trees, water, animals. So she had to kill Gerald Ford because the smog was starting to drift. And I'm just going to tell you this straight up. The news back then was doing the same thing they were doing now. They were saying that car smog was going to kill the sequoia trees in Northern California. So Squeaky from who loved the trees, said, I have to kill Gerald Ford to save the sequoia trees because she watched numerous documentaries on CBS and NBC that were running continuously, saying that the exhaust from the cars was going to kill these three to 500 or 5,000 year old trees. Okay. So this led again to violence is the point I'm trying to make in this little snippet here. Yeah. Well, eco-terrorism is a <clears throat> very real thing. And this is kind of where it starts though. This is kind of where it starts. And when he's coming out of the hotel in DC, that's where Sarah Jane Moore tries to get him. And um, that is also, she shoots a guy, a taxi driver in the crotch and blows his crotch out. <laughs> Sarah Jane Moore does, not, not squeaky from. Okay. <laughs> she blows out a guy's crotch. And wow. he, he survived. Uh, but they would take Which it is he didn't. What <laughs> 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 am I supposed to say? I mean, these are America's untold stories, Hunley. I mean, we're the ones telling them. Nobody knows about this poor guy. The poor guy, just a side note, the poor guy who wrestled her to the ground, Cecil Pipping or something, um, who was the hero. Again, not Secret Service, a civilian. It turns out that he was awarded a, the media heralded him as a hero in San Francisco and revealed that he was, according to the media, homosexual. Oh. And his family did not know. And they Ooh. disowned him. They disowned him. And they Ouch. later, yeah, later on, like 30 or 20 years later, he made up with his family or they made up with him. But the media outed this guy 
and he was out of the closet anyway, from what I understand, but his family didn't know somehow. I don't really know the details, but, but Ford was saved by a gay man in San Francisco. That was the point of the story. Well, you might find them there. Right. No, no. Of course. <laughs> this is 1974. Well, you know what I couldn't help think of, though, is, you know, Ford managed to be nimble enough either way to not get himself shot, even though they made fun of Ford. It was a running joke on Saturday Night Live. Um, Chevy Chase made his bones yeah. off of playing Gerald Ford trip yep. and doing pratfalls. Well, he, uh, just like a guy named Joe Biden, who was probably the same age as him now, you know, uh, although Ford was, don't forget, Ford was a, a, a all-American football oh, yeah. player. For, for Heisman, didn't he? No, not a, I don't think it was a Heisman. I think it was a lineman. Um, uh, but he was an all-American. So he was a nimble cat. But he had stumbled on that incredible stumble case the staircase that goes to the airplane i don't know why every president has to can't they just go around the back they, i mean this is the the most famous photo op in american politics is the guy going up and down the staircase of air force one and how many times have we seen presidents stumble true i mean the the, the thing with biden is he stumbled upward on, on two occasions all right the moyle right center yeah thank you yeah i thought he was a lineman i thought he was a lineman um, yeah, Ford, yeah, interestingly enough, uh, was not a stumble bum as Chase did it. Chase did it, injured himself on numerous occasions, which led to his addiction to uh, painkillers, by the way. Well, and I guess that's one of those this irony is they just painted the picture that he was a stumble bum. No, he was not in any way. He was uh, not. He was not. He's not the brightest guy in the, in the, in the class, but the reality of it is he was kind of handpicked by the Congress, the democratically run Congress, to be the weakest president intentionally. And that's why they approved him in the backroom deal. Now, the reason I mentioned the two assassination attempts, um, in, in San Francisco, he was speaking to the early precursor to the World Economic Forum, which was called the World Council, the mm. World Economic Council or the World Council, something like that. But it was a forerunner to the World Economic Forum. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is because if Sarah Jane Moore or Squeaky Frome had been successful, once again, a guy named Nelson Rockefeller would have been president of the United States. And you mm. tell me the tinfoil hats would not have gone crazy with this because this is Nelson Rockefeller is vice president. Nobody mm. elected him. He fills the vacancy as Ford moves up. Don't forget Spiro Agnew. Nobody elected Ford either. <laughs> Wait, <I'm saying. laughs> Ford moves up the ladder because some guy named Spiro Agnew is it resigns because they they threw the book at him in terms of bribery and corruption and tax evasion. So he he ends up resigning. But uh, then there's a vacancy and that becomes a Nelson Rockefeller who would have liked to have been president. So look, uh, I don't know if Rockefeller had any skin in the game on these two assassination attempts but uh, wouldn't, well, you wouldn't said it was an old man who had money who gave her no i'm just kidding <laughs> no I, I you know I'm, I'm just if history in our alternative history if they had been successful rockefeller would have been president of the united states and in theory would have handpicked his vice president his vice president would have i mean there's a flaw in the system here eric which we're now going to see either with Biden and Harris, if they do jockey for position and one bails and the other one moves up and then the Democratic Party would get to pick their vice president, not unlike what they did post Watergate. This is a complete repeat of American history again. And what they're trying to do is Nixonize. And I said this to a friend yesterday who agreed with me. I pulled this out of my ass, but they're trying to Nixonize Trump to make him completely kryptonite that he's untouchable, which is what they eventually did to Richard Nixon. Now, keep in mind, Richard Nixon, who uh, won 49 states the year before against McGovern, he lost Massachusetts, is gone from American politics moments later. Is probably one of the greatest coups in American political history. This is a guy who won by the biggest landslide. He, well, okay, he's a fascinating story, though, because he was VP, Right. He lost 
and what was probably kind of a shady election. Let, let's be well, honest with his shady, but he, you know, baby, baby Rebozo says, let's sue him, his lawyer. And Nixon says, now let's get him next time. You know, the famous right. statement by B.B. Rebozo. About right, but then he went all the way down, couldn't even win governor of California. He lost that election, mm -hmm. then came back all right. the way to president. I mean, he's a well, comeback kid in yeah, a weird getting way. Getting back to the Secret Service, he goes to Caracas, Venezuela, um, with a guy named Frank Boring. <laughs> Frank Boring is in the presidential limo when the crowd breaks through with pipes and rocks smashing the limousine and they can't get out and they're trapped in the motorcade with no help from the Venezuelan Caracas police. Uh, they are trapped like rats. And when you see them, I don't know if you have a photo, I think I might have, no. No, I, not the Venezuelan I thing. I send them okay. somewhere, but they, they must go into- uh, <laughs> Yeah, sure. I just sent photos. I don't know where they go, folks. Yeah. Well, let me tell the story, but there's many photos you could find of the riot, of the destruction of the presidential limo in 1958 in Caracas when he goes down as VP for Eisenhower with the Secret Service, with Floyd Boring once again, and they barely get out alive. Um, this is similar, but not completely the same, is when LBJ in the same death mobile that Kennedy was in, the same Lincoln, takes it to Australia. And during the height of the anti-war protests in Australia, the limousine is egged and rocked by Australian anti-war protesters, and LBJ flips the F out over this, uh, uh, the people turning on him in Australia. And the, the limousine, they try to hide all these photos because they're so embarrassing to American foreign policy. But the two trips, LBJ to Australia, Nixon to Caracas, are very famous in that the mob almost got them. Yeah, look at this. This is Caracas, right? Yes. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the complete breakdown of the crowd. In other words, the lead car ran into the crowd and, and they got surrounded and the, the motorcade could not continue. Once the motorcade could not continue, the importance, which we're going to see in Dallas in the next episode, the motorcade lead car, obviously it wasn't going to happen in Dallas, but especially internationally, is the most important thing to get through the mob or prevent a mob situation like this. They had pipes and rocks and they were smashing the windows to get at Nixon. And the police did absolutely nothing. And this was because of Eisenhower's foreign policy uh, towards South America during that time later on, Big Sugar and obviously CIA toppling, toppling of our bends in Guatemala and uh, other dictators or elected, not dictators, but elected leaders and dictators being installed. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. There's a bunch of these. I don't know if you have the Australia one. We used it in the LBJ episode, I think. I know. I've Remember that? that? I've been digging it up. We right did use it now. because that guy, that prime minister, I think is the guy who went swimming and never came back. That's the guy who got drunk with LBJ in the White House, who was a heavy duty drinker, went swimming. Oh, yeah, this is it. Yeah, look at this. This is, and that's the death mobile, by the way, with the bubble top. <laughs> this, is, this is the same car Kennedy was killed in. He has a completely renovated LBJ as a souvenir. Um, wow. Wow. Look at the Secret Service guy in the far left, covered with eggs and, and everything and paint. Yeah, he's thrilled. He's thrilled about his job. <laughs> the guy now. in the back, too, look at his head covered. Wow. With wow. And there's then the red paint was obviously significant of blood. They went down the side street. That's the same, uh, I think that's the same Queen Mary, which is a Cadillac in back, the second car that's going to be in Dallas in 1963. Oh, if you go back in time, that it's a, that's their big boat that the Secret Service would ride in. Uh, but here it's like this is every man for himself at this point. Yeah, I don't know why. Obviously, the Vietnam War is why they turned on LBJ, but. I think he, sure. he, he, I think, and this is just my theory, that he held this against the prime minister of Australia, that he was so thin skinned and narcissistic that, that they allowed this to happen. He blamed that guy. Now, I don't know what happened to that guy because there's no version of Australian untold stories yet. <laughs> so if there is a parallel channel like ours in Australia, they may be doing the story of the prime minister who went swimming and never came back. They never. We, 
I'm sorry. Go on. We have we have viewers in Australia. They they can um, talk to their fellow country people and let's get it. Let's get a counterpart show. Right. We can't do it. That's not our history. But uh, there's, if there's a Lord Buckley and Hunley of Australia, we can help them as consultants on how to get a small amount of subscribers within your own country and be beaten out by a political <laughs> assassin. Yes. So we we're quite available to consult with you. Uh, on how to not get subs and still operate a high-profile political uh, uh, YouTube channel. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great, great photo, by the way. But here's what they're trying to avoid. Tight spots, cars, side streets, that kind of crap. You know, and obviously they got themselves wedged in here. And uh, not that anybody shot at them. It's Australia, for God's sakes. But they clearly made their feelings known about the Vietnam War. By the way, I think we lost the Solomon Islands last week. I don't know if anybody wants to cover this. The U.S. Coast Guard tried to pull into the Solomon Islands um, to refuel, and they were re rebuffed and rejected by the Chinese Navy. Really? Yeah. And our parents fought for them. My father was there, and a lot of our viewers' uh, fathers fought in that area in World War II uh, for that particular reason against the Japanese, obviously, back then, or in the Solomons. And now the Chinese, and, and I'm, I'm again, I have not seen any confirmation in the mainstream media about this, but I saw that story about the Coast Guard being turned away, U.S. Coast Guard uh, being turned away from refueling of the Solomon Islands by the Chinese Navy. And in the article, it said that the Chinese Navy now, and the Chinese now control the Solomon Islands. I guess they didn't take out a full page ad in the New York Times saying we're now running the Solomon Islands, so it doesn't make news. But if anybody in the chat, we're not going to Pelosi over there to say hi here. Dude, I don't know. I haven't looked into this, but I, I mean, it would be really a mega story if the Chinese have taken the Solomon Islands and they just didn't announce it on on C-SPAN or something. You know, yeah, and uh, nice it, and quiet. Nice and quiet. This would be, you know, not an unusual way to do it. I don't think they're looking for more aggravation, um, but they're quietly moving around the globe down there, inch by inch, right, Eric? Seems that way, but you know, we're, we'll we'll stir things up elsewhere. Anyway, <laughs> now we jumped over. We did um, Ford, we did Ford, Reagan, Reagan. Nothing happened really under Jimmy Carter. Well, he got out of the limo though. That was interesting. He got out of the presidential limo and walked with Rosalind Carter unannounced down Pennsylvania Avenue the first day of the inauguration. And that completely spooked the Secret Service. And the reason you think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because they really had a scramble on foot. Yeah. And the reason it's of interest to me personally, which can be recorded and is recorded in the Abby Hoffman episode, is Abby Hoffman was there and he ran through the crowd equally uh, uh, keeping up with Jimmy Carter yelling, it's me, Abby Hoffman, pardon me as your first act of office. And Abby ran down through the crowd with Carter, yelling at him through the crowd to pardon him as his first act of office. But this was after he took the tour of FBI headquarters with a group of tourists right before the same day, Inauguration Day, while on the lam from the FBI on the 10 most wanted list of the FBI, he took the tour of FBI headquarters uh, near where the inauguration was and just at the end when the tour was coming to an end and they were showing the 10 most wanted criminals currently he yelled out you'll never take me alive coppers and ran out an exit door after he ran out that exit door he went to the inauguration which is why i'm mentioning this entire did he hang out with carter's daughter too Yes, they took the CIA to court in Massachusetts and they won. For re Absolutely. Amy Carter, it's in our strange bedfellow segment of, of the episode. Yeah. Him and Amy Carter put the CIA on trial in Massachusetts because they were recruiting off campuses. On, on campuses in the University of Massachusetts, in particular at Amherst, I believe. And the jury sided with the plaintiffs who had been arrested for trespassing not unlike the insurrection of January 6th, they were arrested for trespassing. And it was uh, despite being a misdemeanor, they insisted on not accepting a plea deal and went to trial and defeated the CIA in court, in a United States court. And that was Amy Carter and Abby Hoffman teaming up uh, at that time. 
um, to take on the CIA, which I think is in the Abby Hoffman episode. It is. It is. Can't play with that. So, okay, so we caught up and we probably want to wrap up with a little foreshadowing of events to come for JFK, right? Have a little uh, video. What do you have here now? What is this? Let's take a look. We've got a little video about Love Field. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Love. I love Love Field. If it'll play. If it'll play, but that's another segment. This is where you come in, Hunley, your specialty. This is Love Field, a day, November 22nd, 1963. This crazy crowd when Kennedy lands in Air Force One. Now, they're coming out of Fort Worth, so it's a two-and-a-half-minute flight, I think, in the air from uh, Fort Worth to, to Love. But they'd also been in San Antonio the morning before, and he had had numerous... Um, Secret Service motorcade uh, formations. Now, what you're going to see if we ever get this thing here, which we'll get to in the next episode, obviously, but you're going to see the stripping away of the Secret Service in Dallas alone. And the reason this is important is because the configuration in Dallas is different than Fort Worth, and it's different than San Antonio. It's different than Houston. It's different than Miami. It's different than Tampa. That are all Those are all the same. And what you see in Dallas is a completely different configuration. And that is run by a guy named Emery Roberts. And Emery Roberts is going to come into this story and figure into it as the guy who is in the command car in back of the JFK uh, limousine. And Emery Roberts and, and, and Roy Kellerman, who's sitting in the shotgun seat, and William Greer are going to be major players in, in terms of the episode. But in this particular uh, video, which is Eventually uh, going to play. I'm just going to try and load it locally. Okay. Uh, In this particular why. video, you're going to see Don Lawson and Hank uh, Ripka, two Secret Service agents, as the motorcade begins to form at Love Field. They unload the car. The car comes over in a C-140 transport plane. They unload the vehicle. And for the first time, this guy, Emily <laughs> Oh, here we go. We'll take a look. If this is running now or no? Yeah, it is running now. Okay, just run that. It's only about 15 seconds long. But I'll... Now the motorcade will very shortly start to move up. Sheriff Bill Decker, Dallas County Sheriff, oh. driving his own car, personally escorting it with the chief of police, the presidential car, moving out. The president and first lady. Big, beautiful Lincoln. Followed by a carload of press. Okay, if you could just freeze over there. Okay, that that is Don Walker. There you go. That's Don, different. That, that's Don Lawton, and the other side is, is Hank Ripka. They are waved away. The reason that Don puts up his hands is, "What do you want from me?" Emery Roberts is yelling, "Get off the presidential car." And he says to get off the presidential car. And these two Secret Service agents are stunned. Neither one of them made it into Dallas. They went and ate lunch in the uh, um, uh, airport. They never even made it because there was no room for them. So, you know, what, what, what Lawton does is he throws up his hands because he is doing his job. And Emery Roberts... And, and his assistants, including Kellerman, was in charge. It's both Roy Kellerman uh, and Bain does not show up. And and either does uh, the other guy who was... Yeah, th this is uh, Emery Roberts, right? Yep. Okay. Emery Roberts is one of the plotters that we're going to get into on, on next Tuesday. Because Emery Roberts and Kellerman... Kellerman always said afterwards that it was a conspiracy to kill Kennedy, Kellerman said. But I think that's a limited hangout on the part of Kellerman. Um, and we'll, and Greer, we're going to get into him. We're going to get into Winton uh, uh, Lawson, who's in the lead car, Secret Service guy, came from military intelligence. Uh, but the, the thing about Emery Roberts and his assistant um, is that they rearrange the motorcade right then and there. This is where it's formed. Because every motorcade, which we're going to show on Tuesday, has the media truck, a flatbed truck, in front of the presidential car. The reason that's done is so they can film and photograph him. That truck 
is moved all the way to the rear of the motorcade for no reason. There's no explanation. Press mm -hmm. isn't happy. This is done by Emery Roberts. Remember the name, people. He did this. So there would be no filming of the assassination. There's no explanation. It's done right there. Also, on no that. buffer between the president and somebody else who might be in front. Exactly. That would be in front of the lead car. And then usually, and we're going to show examples on Tuesday. If you could just give me a couple of minutes here to explain the setup yeah. for Tuesday. We're going to show this around the world to show you the flatbed truck of media in Rome and in, in, in Paris and in Ireland. And you see the filming and the photographs of all the media. They're put, this is not the media bus. The media bus has print guys on it, people. I'm talking about film and photographers, including White House photographers, are on the flatbed truck. That's moved all the way to the back. Okay, that's out. Johnson is not supposed to be there, LBJ, as the vice president because of having the president and the vice president in the same spot. That's another violation. There's over 14 to 15 violations that you're going to see just in Dallas, just in Dallas, not in San Antonio, not in Fort Worth, not in Tampa, not in Miami, just Dallas. There's no explanation for it. The only explanation they give is Kennedy made us do it. And now that he's dead, nobody can check that out. So one of the lies that Emory Roberts comes up with is that JFK wanted the men off the back of the car. He didn't like them up there, right? So what Vince Palomara does, who is the leading historian, by the way, and we'll put up his book, Survivor's Guilt, and we'll put up some links, Eric, to some of Vince's work, because he's the lead researcher into the, Amer into the U.S. Secret Service involving uh, the JFK assassination, Survivor's Guilt, a fantastic book. Um, he interviewed all these Secret Service agents, and one by one, they said to him, Kennedy never said to me, they didn't, he didn't want agents on the back of the limousine. And what Vince did was he contacted all of them and he narrowed it down to Emory Roberts was the guy who made it up. And he, is, the, the secret service agents all say, Emory Roberts told me that. Never heard mm. JFK ever saying it. And he nails them. He nails them hard. And there is, no, you, you'll see photos of the agents on, back, on the back of the limousine with the handles everywhere in the United States everywhere in europe there's plenty of footage of it except in freaking dallas and what they did there was strip away the secret service protection i mean just get to the motorcycles because there's supposed to be 12 motorcycles that show up at love field emory roberts reduces it to four he tells the four with his assistant kennedy doesn't like the loud noise of the harleys he can't speak to his guests in the limousine what does that do it moves them back off the sides of the limo to the rear and back, offering them absolutely no protection inside the presidential limo. This was done intentionally. It's only done in Dallas. Doesn't happen in Fort Worth. Doesn't happen in San Antonio. Doesn't happen in Houston. Doesn't happen in Tampa. Doesn't happen in Miami. Does not happen anywhere in the world. And we'll show some configurations next week to, to prove the point I'm trying to make here. And you will see that they don't check for open windows. They, there is nothing in the Secret Service manual. We're going to get into them getting drunk at the cellar, drinking moonshine, losing their IDs, the IDs that are somehow flashed at the grassy knoll, claiming to be Secret Service agents up on the grassy knoll. Every Secret Service agent is accounted for. They're all in that car. And, and I'll just say this. Once the, the shots are fired, the only guy who does respond, obviously, is Clint Hill who just out of instinct rushes the, the, to get Jackie. And he's personally Jackie's secret service agent. So he is there dealing with Jackie. Emery Roberts stands up in that, uh, what, what's known as the, the Queen Mary, that open Cadillac and yells, nobody move, nobody move. And for that, he committed treason and murder and should have been indicted and put on trial. For that move alone, Emery Roberts should have been arrested. And I'll tell you something else. Siebert and O'Neill, I'm sorry to get off the track for a second, but Siebert mm -hmm. and O'Neill, the two FBI agents who filed legitimate reports about the autopsy in Bethesda, they treated Greer and, and, and Kellerman as suspects and filed uh, 301 reports interviewing both of them as suspects, giving their height, their weight, their age, their location. And there became a battle within the autopsy 
because they had the permission of J. Edgar Hoover to be at the autopsy, and the Secret Service was trying to force them out of that autopsy. And they shadowed Greer, Greer and Kellerman, who were there as part of the autopsy for as Secret Service. Don't, don't forget, we'll get into this next week. But the Secret Service, at machine gun point, steals the body from Parkland in a, in a gun standoff from the county coroner in Dallas, who legally has the right to do the, do the autopsy on the presidential body that's killed in Dallas. There's no law about presidential uh, bodies being shipped to Bethesda. They had to get that body out of there. And they raised their machine guns to and shoved and pushed against Dallas authorities to get that body through the corridors of Parkland and onto Air Force One, which we'll get into next week. But this guy, Emery Roberts and Kellerman and Greer, uh, are three of the top five or six guys I'm going to get into and really get into and nail them next week. And this is work that's been going on going for many years. So this is not original research on my part. However, I've been following it for many, many years. And the Secret Service has gotten off scot-free. And a lot of blame is put on the FBI, the CIA, all these other lettered agencies. But the Secret Service, by the way, was involved in this thing up to their necks. And the, the reason Gerald Bain, who you saw at the very beginning, which is why I wanted to start the show with Gerald Bain uh, signing in and I've got a secret as a guest, is that Gerald Bain was the head of the White House detail, and he did not show up in Dallas. And Floyd Boring, who was second in command of the White House detail, refused to show up in Dallas. This left Emory Roberts and Roy Kellerman in charge of Dallas. And and nobody got a vacation, like I was telling you last night, from the Secret Service. You accumulated vacation time, but it was very rarely taken. You would accumulate three years of vacation time and not take it as a, as a White House detail person. For reasons that are inexplicable and never, never brought to light, Gerald Bain took vacation time for that trip to Dallas. And you say, well, where did he go? He didn't go anywhere. He mowed his lawn at, in, in, in Connecticut. And when confronted about where he went a couple of years later on his vacation, his wife defending him said he got food poisoning and went nowhere. He didn't. It's just three years of no vacation. This guy went nowhere and he stayed home and Floyd Boring stayed in D.C. and he didn't go to Dallas because these two guys were straight shooters. And I hate to use that pun, straight shooters, but I, these two guys knew what was coming and they were either forced to the sidelines or did not want to participate in this Secret Service coup that's going to happen in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963, Eric, which we're going to get into next week. And believe me, this is going to astonish a lot of people in the in the uh, uh, viewership because there is such damning evidence about, and I don't care about George Hickey standing up with an AR-15 and this stupid mortal era bullshit book where he blew the Kennedy's head off by accident. And we're not going to get into that deep state uh, bubba mice <clears throat> Bumalysis, which we use the word of the day. It was the word of the day last week. I can't use it again. I think we use that as a Yiddish word of the day a couple of weeks ago. But we're not going to get into that because that's a waste of everybody's time. But we will get into super chats. What's that? <laughs> but we will get into super chats. We will get into super chats <laughs> and we will get into some other stuff. I just wanted to tell you why we couldn't fit it all in in one episode today. So the, the buffer is really this brief history of the Secret Service to lead into where we're going today with this story for Tuesday. So I, I wanted to show that little video at the end because it serves as a bookend to Gerald uh, uh, Bain, you know, at the beginning, signing in on that TV game show um, uh, to tell the truth. Perfect. And <clears throat> we've got some love coming in. So thank you. Um, Joe Conger is a great grandson of Everett Judson Conger who tracked down Booth. Oh, wow. Wow. That, that's amazing. That's a great one. Um, I don't know you if they remember the National Detective Service. Well, if that was pink, uh, that might have been pink. I don't. The Pinkerton Agency was tied in with Lincoln, and I know kind of um, helped with the Secret Service formation. I don't know if that was part of the National Detective. Right. Service I, I just think not. he was using them as a protective service. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. I mean, Pinkerton saved Lincoln on his way he was there. Born in Detroit. I don't know how that's relevant. But okay. Well, because he was a Russian. Oh, so oh I'm sorry. A, yes, I, that's correct. I'm sorry. That was my mistake. That's true. I did know that. Uh, um, actually, watch John Hankley, Chris Cuomo. I don't know. You know what? I don't know, but I don't care. It still hurts. It hurts our soul. It hurts my heart. 
It hurts it my heart that I it, am defeated, Beverly, by these uh, mutts. No kidding. I mean, Fredo and uh, wannabe assassin. Yeah. Uh, notable evidently. and active. I mean, Barnes is authentic notable. Yeah, it, it's bullshit. Oh, okay. they, 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 right. they say that. Oh, right? they have definitions of these. Right, right. But then they take it away. So well, it's, it's like, kind of like Wikipedia. Yeah. The, nobody nobody will do. Oh, okay. Until it's been added to you as the classes I teach. Wow. Sparty Matt. Way to go. That's awesome. And that's really awesome, bro. Uh, if you are, bro. I mean, it could be a woman. Oh, but it says Matt. So man, it's a man. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have been banned all U.S. baby ships. Yeah, I don't know what baby ships are. You meaning like smaller vessels? Probably. Uh, I'm guessing they might be Navy. And that's okay. Well, I think that's a big story. No or no? Uh, I would. I would think so, but uh, yeah. Right. My father was on the USS Tangier down there, and a lot of people's fathers were down there, and relatives. I mean, if this is true, I think the the relatives of American uh, World War II veterans, especially naval veterans, uh, as I am a, a, a descendant of would like to know this, that there, that it was all in vain. That, that's true. And thank right? you, Joe Bridges. Joe Bridges, the, the unusual bastard son of Jeff Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Or Bo. I'm kidding. Or Bo, right. Beverly, don't ever be sorry to love us. There's a, 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 a show on FX called The Old Man where um, Jeff Bridges plays a retired underground CIA operative who's gone underground to hide, mm. not to hide, but to, he, he's been uh, deep sixed and he lives off the grid as a daughter and um, they come to kill him. And that's how the series starts. It's not a bad series, but he flashes back to a young Jeff Bridges. I never seen this before. And in the, in a diner, like in the nineties or seventies, I don't really know. It's a young Jeff Bridges he's with his future wife and the actor looks like him right and he's got the mannerisms of jeff bridges but they dubbed in jeff bridges odd style of speaking into the actor's voice and i was Smart. like whoa i've never seen that done before um anyway i'm only up to episode two but it looks pretty good that's cool uh no i don't <laughs> ball club, right? shave it off both of yeah. us yeah, what, what, why? <laughs> wait, wait, I have to do this too now? What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, on that note, do we do have merch available, and you can buy a pedestrian teddy bear. That teddy bear does not look pedestrian. That looks like a good teddy bear. No, it's a, no it's, it doesn't have the, um, the spirit of Oswald. Who is taking over Twitter, by the way? I saw uh, that. Apparently, is um, in in newspapers, um, on the run. Uh, Oswald's uh, he's Dude, he, was cited, he was cited with uh, on the run with Gavin McGinnis. Uh, yeah, apparently, apparently, <laughs> uh, Oswald got, got threatened, and and now people are taking notice. So, right, we'll have to keep tracking with Oswald. You got the uh, polo shirt. I don't. I still don't have the polo shirt. I'm gonna have to buy that. that yeah, buy the polo shirt. shirt. I like the hat that. I like. The hat's really cool. Got the hat um, that doesn't fit over the. Oh yeah, the bucket hat. I don't have that either. I got to get the bucket hat. You the, got a cap. I think and the stickers. You got the stickers and a bunch of other crap. Bald yep. club maybe, but beard club definitely. Oh, I see what you're saying. I wonder if Pasha really has a beard like that. Oh, no. dude, dude, not Darling. <laughs> Darling Kogallan. No, it's not the band. This, it's that Judith Mary Baker, Dorothy Kogallan, and now the third one is added to the list, um, which is uh, James Files, all going hmm. to the um, JFK Hall of Shame. Okay. Well, never getting an episode is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You'll keep hearing that name till the end of time. <laughs> right. I'm my grave. I'm just going to be mumbling on my deathbed. Dorothy Kogallan. Why didn't I do an episode of Dorothy Kogallan? Some, somebody's going to assassinate me because I didn't do an episode on Dorothy Kogallan. Well, that will surely make it never happen. Well, I'll tell you something. The PayPal Book Fund is really helping me get all these weird books on uh, General Curtis Bombs Away LeMay which are very rare. There's a, a, a multiple list that I'm trying to put together through the book fund through PayPal. One of them is, which I didn't know existed, is an autobiography by LeMay, um, which I'm yet to get my hands on. So I'm, I'm really excited from the PayPal book fund to try to uh, raise the funding to get that LeMay book, because we're going to do a 
episode on Curtis Bombs Away LeMay, and I need all these books on him to do that episode. So I thank everyone who's helped out in that uh, PayPal facility. Um, and then Eric's got this ticker down here. Yep, unstructured.locals.com. We're constantly putting stuff up there. Uh, it's growing like crazy. Really cool to see people in there. Um, they've kind of taken uh, over. Like, they've got their own world. That's, that's the idea. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> that was the whole reason I wanted to do Locals, because, right. like, YouTube has the membership program, and I appreciate that, but it doesn't facilitate the communication. Right. Locals is kind of like Facebook, but without the idiots. And right. Can, and also, there's no censorship, and also, it's um, people that are want to be involved in this particular yeah. adventure of uh, untold stories, right? Uh, yeah, they inv they invest in it and right, us and, right. and each other. Well, how, how much does it cost? Like thirty a month? No, five dollars a month. Twenty five a month? Five dollars a month, man. Oh, come on, or it's only bucks five dollars a, a month. That's it, only. Yep, yep. Or fifty a year. Oh, fifty a year. I see what you're saying. So you even get two months free if you go for a year. Okay. All right. I could do that. I could make that work. And what do you get? You get secret documents that I put up there? Occasionally. Okay. Do you get scripts that I put up there? Occasionally. Rare PDFs of the Kennedy assassination that I put I've up there? I've heard that rumor. Okay. So you get something. It's not just like, what do you get with, with Barnes and Viva? You don't really get anything, do you? You don't specifically get any. I'm not, I'm not even going to go there because Barnes oh, no, I mean, is look, ass off. Other than the hush hush thing, which is unbelievable. I don't know how yeah. it does. The hush hush thing is worth. Well, and Burger with Barnes, he, 40 I don't give a shit what he charges. The hush hush thing is worth 20, 30 a month just, just alone. I mean, he, yeah. he's he's winging what I'm doing. So, I mean, I'm winging this too, but, you know, he's just peeling them off every single day, apparently. Yeah, he's. But at some point, the trains will collide and we'll do the same episode the same day. But. You know, well, I think the trains will collide on Friday because wait a minute. What are you saying, Hunley? Is this is this yes. who's AZ Boyles bombing on my page? I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. Arizona Bowles bombing could be I'm gonna have to restructure that restructured. But you're saying on Friday, this is gonna be free form Friday, the once uh -huh. a month rare twisted psychotic adventure where a bunch of men ramble and discuss things without any structure whatsoever. For or at least hours. two of them. Right. For multiple hours until you get fed up with us and pull the lighting and the plugs and take the football and go home like Snoopy. Yeah, right? it, it, it'll be, yes, it'll be where two of you. Like we're going to get cooking, it. and then you're going to say, I've heard Last my call. wife call me about meatloaf, and I got to pull the <laughs> plug. And Barnes and I will be looking again like two schmucks in the headlights. No, Barnes will go, bye. Yeah, and Barnes will go, bye. I got to go. I got to do <laughs> Alec Jones in five <laughs> seconds. Yeah, yeah, he's got things lined up. I got to so, do Alex Jones in five seconds. I got to go. But you're saying that this Friday, which is a once a month, once a month event. That's right. And 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 that people come to this event. We got because we get a lot of views on that. I noticed. Yeah, we got a lot of views with Viva too. So I, I, I it looks like about tied from last week compared to Preform Friday. But I think when there's all four of us, yeah, then it's time kind of, though. What's that? It'll be the three. Oh, okay. But I'm saying when there's four, it oh, really yeah. breaks the internet for some reason that I can't figure out. Yeah, they love watching Viva and I look at each other and look at Ego. Well, I mean, Viva. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> so, okay. So, just to recap, you're at on, you have a Twitter account, Eric. Make I do. Follow. Okay. I'm at Lord Buckley if you want to follow me. I don't know what's going on over there. I just uh, became a serial post blocker. You're a serial blocker. So, folks, right. by the I'll way, if it. you're blocked by Lord Buckley, don't reach out to me. I don't, don't know. Don't go to Hudley crying me. like a bitch. <laughs> you, you got blocked for some stupid thing you said in the middle of the night in your underwear. I have very little tolerance on Twitter. I just block anybody. So don't take it personally. I just I don't care. I just don't want any negative. I mean, Viva kind of engages with them. I don't. I don't want any negativity on there. So I, I really, I'm not on there to debate. I'm just up there to put uplifting stories onto Twitter that can help us as a people. I'm really not into debating things on Twitter. I'll, I'll do that. Now we do read the comment section, right, Eric? Oh yeah. And, oh, yeah. and if you're a lone nutter, you'll be deleted from the comment section too. If you believe Oswald was a lone shooter, please, please. Find yourself another channel because this is the wrong place for you. 
<laughs> we're way past that as an investigative uh, uh, group. We're way past it as JFK researchers. Uh, I'll be going to the JFK re uh, conference in, in, in Dallas. Hopefully Hunley will show up there at the end of November, the 20th, uh, 19th to 20th in um, Crown Plaza Hotel, I think it is, in the convention center mm -hmm. there, um, where there's a lot of mainstream, the top guys are all there. And that's my crew. That's my crew. If you're here to debate with me about Oswald, this is not the place. I, I don't have the time, don't have the energy. We're so way past that, bro. Please go to another channel. Please go to another website. We really don't have time for that here because we're more of a cutting edge situation about modern stuff, where we are now, not going back to 1981 to debate something that the researchers have debunked and are long past. We don't really have time for it. Um, John F. Kennedy changed his name. I mean, th there was a guy, there, there was a guy who worshiped Robert Kennedy, who was an anti-Castro Cuban, who changed his name to Robert Kennedy in, in the in the 60s, I think, or 70s. Uh, uh, he was became an American citizen and changed his name to RFK, but his name was like Juan Hernandez or something. Uh, I am not. I am not. I am not. But there's there are mainstream guys that were Don Bowles. That sounds very familiar, Don Bowles. Don Bowles from L.A., the musician. The bombing, punk, something about bombing. You know, the punk rock musician named Bowles uh, here in L.A. I don't know if that's the same one. But, uh, yeah, PayPal, unstructured, Twitter, um, the comment section. And locals, and really locals. Locals is our biggest Definitely thing. Local. Yeah. yeah. And we're really trying to build that up, too. We're trying to build up a locals community because I think we passed Gorka, dude. We passed um, Sebastian Gorka? Gorka? Yep. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, yeah, because I don't really trust Freeform Friday Moose Fest is the 22 version of what going to. Yeah. The oh, very nice. OK, very interesting, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's an that's a pretty good analogy. I just don't trust YouTube. That's why I want to build up. And Eric feels the same way about locals. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. which is owned yeah. by Rumble. And we're trying to develop a Rumble more of a relationship on Rumble and have some exclusive contact for Rumble and locals because I, I believe we're in the wrong hemisphere over here. Um, we have had our problems, Eric and I, with this with the channel and uh, copyright and everything else. Um, so I think in a perfect universe. Speaking of which, we got a uh, Rumble rant. What? Yeah, from um, 1111 Doug, $20. Found you guys through the LouRockwell.com website. Oh, Based yeah. Lou Rockwell has been, has been posting a lot of our stuff. Quotes and stuff. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different people on there other than Lou Rockwell. He's got a lot of reporters and stuff like that. But um, used to be perceived as a crackpot site, but not so much anymore. Um, we're legitimizing it. Yeah, we're legitimizing it. And, you know, hopefully this will legitimize us in a lot of ways, too, by getting the numbers up on the subscribers and the locals membership. Because, as I said last week, the reason that it, it's low is because we cover such a vast array of subjects. It is a smorgasbord. We have little mini Franks, which I love. We have little fried shrimp. We have the egg rolls, the miniature egg rolls, and the other channels have one food. And we've got an entire buffet. You're killing me, Don. Bo what is? It? Why don't you just say what it says, bro? Why don't you just bombing it? What is, does the English language is this limited or something? <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with this guy? I don't know if we're, I'm not familiar with it. So <laughs> right, I don't know. I mean, I, anyway, um, we'll, Don Bowles we'll, an investigation into his murder. Okay, so this guy was murdered. Named Don Bowles was murdered. Go on. Uh, somebody wrote a book about it. Okay, I'm with you so far. Um, it's an old book. Old book, right? Seventy seven. Hold on, let me see. There's a little more. Just I'm trying. I'm trying to find information on this. Go Hunley. Go on. Don Bowles. Sounds very familiar. He's a name. journalist. Okay, I'm with you still. Killed for his reporting, supposedly. supposedly. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, come on. This part of the octopus story? You see the octopus up there? No. I okay. Didn't. I think this guy is going to come back to me with the octopus for 99 cents. The uh, same guy. If it is the octopus. He's an Arizona Republic reporter. Okay. And he was. Oh, yes. Yeah. I vaguely remember this story. Yeah. So um, 
It might be very well unknown. Yeah, yeah, it may be an untold story. I have to look it up. I I do remember Don Bowles. I never really deeply got into it. Um, okay. He I'll, was lured to a up. hotel, the Hotel Clarendon, by a man who promised information. I guess he got bombed? It's, yeah, it's, oh, dynamite strapped behind the white dots and exploded. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it might have been involved with him uncovering uh, uh, mobsters in Arizona. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, liquor distributor, yeah. racing commission. Yes. Yes. Okay, well, I, I, that's something we'll have to catch up. So, okay. Oh, no. Uh, very cool. Yeah, I, thanks for reminding us, Eric. That would take a period of a marathon session, pre in between Mark and Mars, two hours just to warm up. Except that Mrs. Hunley, who is a oh, good Oh, give woman, me a break. And Barnes has, has other things to do, too. So let's. <laughs> I mean, well, Barnes doesn't turn off the lights and leave us standing there in the dark. I mean, only Hunley can do that. We can't. Uh, no, no, Barnes is gone. The, I, I if, mean, he, if he's got something, yeah, he doesn't It's like it. when you see the end. We're not chatting afterwards. No, Barnes, we have once in a while. We do once, once in a while. while, but in general, Barnes is off to another Dude, thing. I, I hope he's got. He, he's trying to save the country. Why is he going to talk to a fat couple of guys like us? I mean, this guy's out there trying to. He's Batman. He can't he say that. He he watches it. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but I mean, he, he's got. He might take you. your advice. He's got people on trial. I just go in my room, put on a pair of pants. I mean, Jesus Christ! You wear pants for this? No, I don't. I'm saying after the show, I put on a pair. Of oh, pants. okay, okay, okay. I just as long as we're clear. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, it's always until... a note. It's always some note. Okay. Yeah. So Tuesday, Secret Service, right? Part two. Right. But before that. Who cares? Freeform Friday. Freeform We're Friday. Fun. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's all let's all be here for that. We're just gonna go. No rules. All hand all hands on deck. Perfect. See okay. you then. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>